Oh my god, honey. <laughs> Tori's knees dickered. I'm pretty worried about Tori. Look at that, Heidi. Huh? Wow. Wow. Well, here we are at Greenpoint in Grossmorn National Park. We've been camping out here for five days, doing just awesome, awesome hikes in the area. Uh, we checked out the Tablelands, which was amazing, very barren country. We climbed Grossmore Mountain, which was one of the best hikes I've ever done in my life. We went in to see an inland fjord, which was jaw dropping. And we did a big coastal hike here too. Not a big one, but a, kind of a rainy day coastal hike just right off of our campsite here, which was awesome too. But today we're packing up and moving on. We're gonna head south back to around where the Tablelands are in Grossmore Park. And we're gonna check out uh, an area called Trout Creek. And we're also gonna check out an area called Green Garden. Every hike, you know, we're seeing moose. One of them was almost too close. When we were doing the uh, the hike on the coastal trail, uh, Kate, we took a little kind of like short little side trail off the main path and saw this kind of big pond there and looked like good moose habitat. So I was showing Tori, you know, how good my moose call had gotten. Then we got we walked out a bit and then I did another call in another spot and sure enough when we came back by that way there's a big bull moose on the trail and that can be a little scary because bull moose when they're in the rut are probably the most dangerous animal in the bush around here but uh, luckily it didn't really want to have anything to do with us and it saw us and kind of trotted on its way and uh, we didn't manage to capture it on film um, in part because I was like, my, the camera's in my bag. I'm like, Tori, get the camera. But she was like terrified. Everything's way scarier when you have the kids with you because you just care about their safety so much. So that was amazing. Then we saw three caribou when we did the Tablelands hike. Even one we managed to get fairly close to. Super cool. And then we saw a big bull caribou and a bull moose both at the same time just off either side of the trail uh right at uh, the end of the approach trail um when we climbed Grossmore Mountain. So we came down off the mountain. Wow, what a great hike that was. How could it be any better? Boom, there's a moose. Let's go get, get a closer look at that moose. Oh, look, a caribou over there. So super cool watching both of those things. Um, extremely windy, so it was hard to even film them because I was about to blow over. And just the views from on top of Grossmore Mountain were absolutely spectacular. We're talking about just shots of high perched alpine lakes with waterfalls trickling down deep valleys with lakes way down there, views out to the ocean, enormous jagged cliffs, uh, over a 500 meter climb up a very, very steep, I don't know what angle it was, but a scree slope after the four kilometer approach trail. And uh, Tori and I almost felt like, man, is this crazy bringing our kids up here, especially because of the wind. And once we got up on top of that, the wind was, was very, very strong, unsettling really, I almost had to walk you know, if I was walking that way, I almost had to point my head this way and walk sideways just so it wouldn't blow me over. And it was almost hard to breathe when it was that windy. So that was crazy. But, you know, you got to be prepared for that. The area is known for wind. You are climbing a mountain. Um, we hit the weather overall well. Um, we didn't want to hang out on top in that weather. It was just unsettling for us. So we, we went down the back of the mountain um, and got into a less windy area. It got warm, it was beautiful. Um, and we stopped where there's a, a little backcountry campsite there for lunch and then enjoyed the rest of the trek, which kind of went on a side hill, you know, big views of the valley. Just, I can't, I can go on and on how amazing that hike was, but it was extremely hard. Today's adventure is not gonna be as challenging as, you know, climbing a mountain as part of a 17K kilometer trek. We're hopefully gonna do two shorter treks today. One is, 
9K, but I don't think we have those elevation gains, um, you know, scrambling up enormous uh, scree cliffs, basically. So I'm really excited because this is supposed to be a very beautiful area of the park. Um, so, I mean, how could anything be better than what we've already seen? I don't know, but uh, I wouldn't doubt if it is because this park just keeps, you know, impressing me again and again. But anyways, just getting the final things packed up here. We, you know, we we're put, stayed put here at this campsite for five days so a lot of things to kind of gather up get ready repack etc etc but we got the kids in the truck um, we're gonna just close up we're gonna re-hitch up our trailer and we're gonna drive south and the reason we're packing up camp is because that's an hour drive from where we're camped now so it doesn't really make sense to double all the way back an hour just for tonight and to grab our trailer and you know what we're starting to want to change the pace anyways um, this is the only uh, campground in Gross Morn Park that's open in the off season. There's only been one other person camped here on the other side with the plug-in sites. There was one other person there for a brief moment. So we've had the place pretty much to ourselves. But uh, yeah, so we're going to be camping, I guess, outside of the park on a private campground or just at the side of the road today. So yeah, we're going to basically shovel some food into Wesley and uh, and Huddy, hook up the trailer and be on our way, but another awesome hike ahead. Oh, wasn't recording. Stop just it. Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Go on, North, in the truck. Good boy. <laughs> What's going on? Are you a little sore? Just sitting in the truck for the last hour or two, however long we've been driving, everything has stiffened up. So my calves are like this right now. They're so, so tight. Are you going to be able to do the hike today, hon? I, I'm sure once I warm up, I'll be okay, but I'm pretty sore. Oh my god, honey. <laughs> Rose hips. These are a wild edible. The flower grows out of here, and when the flower falls off, you're left with this. The skin is edible. The seeds are edible too, but they're hard. They can break your teeth, so they need to be ground up. But the skin out of this is really tasty, makes a good jam, all kinds of stuff. And the seeds are all in here too. So just a wild rose plant here. Tons of them around here, look over here. Wild rose, and then they leave you with delicious edible rose hips. So we've driven about an hour south and um, we're at the head of the Green Garden Trail. It's a nine kilometer return hike and it is extremely windy, like real windy. I mean, not crazy, but you know, it's over 60 kilometer an hour gusts and it's cold. So we're just bundling the kids and we've just been kind of like waiting, hopefully, hoping that it kind of dies down a bit. But I don't think it's going to, and we're going to regret it if we bail. So I think we're just going to go for it. Huddy looks like, you know, he wouldn't mind burning off a little energy and seeing some sights. What do you think, Huddy? What are your thoughts, Huddy? We saw another couple hikers pull up in their vehicle, jump out, throw backpacks on, and go. That's what it's like when you don't have kids. Anyways, I think we're gonna start moving here. Well, we're doing it, kind of, not yet. Super slow start, but uh, I don't know. I don't think the weather's getting any better here, so we're just gonna go for it. and. You know, we'll warm up when we start walking. We got uh, a nine kilometer return trek here that goes right to the coast. Green garden trail, it's called, it's supposed to be really beautiful. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna give her. Kids are super, super bundled. They got their windbreakers on, no rain in the forecast. So I think we'll be okay. Might uh, destroy the uh, fun of it all a little, but I think after we get past this hill here, we might be out of the wind for a bit anyway. So yeah. Um, last day here, we want to make the best of it. We considered honestly bailing because of the wind. Honey, you're good, bud. But uh, I think we'll be okay. 
What do you think, Wes? It's windy, huh, bud? Here we go. The guy came up to us and said that he failed his wife. Like, oh, we're local, whatever. We'll come back and do it another time. Too windy. So, you know, if we make it in there, and uh, it's just too much. If we make it in like a kilometer, it's too much. We'll turn back or, you know, but I think we'll start warming up. And the kids are super bundled. Me and Tori can't go that, that warm or else we'll start to, uh, if we go that warm, we're going to start to sweat too much. And then when we stop, it'll be worse. So. The beginning of the trail looks like a cakewalk, though, other than for the wind. doing it but it seems the story of the day once again is the wind put our snuggly toques on seems to help but it's a little less windy here than in the parking lot really good uh, trail here to start out with too and uh, you know very open country so not much protection but this goes right down to the coast uh, it's supposed to be really beautiful, so so far so good. Um, Tori's got a sore knee from our mountain climb the other day too, so that's another thing that might cause us to want to turn back or I don't know, slow down or whatever. Oh, party traveling so far. Right. Genuinely concerned her cat. What is it, your calf or your knee? Your knee. Tori's knee's dickered. She's got a sports injury. I'm uh, trying to assess the situation here. So I see it goes down, then I see it up on this hill, it goes up, and then I don't see it from there. How Which, bad is your knee, be honest? Um, like I said, it comes in waves, but it's mostly the downhill, and there's we're, going, we're doing a lot of downhill right now. I feel like if I had a tensor on it or like some sort of compression thing on it, it might feel better, you know? Maybe we should make you a walking stick, Bundalinis. Hold on. It's using my uh, cold steel four max folding knife super robust folding knife um, really portable not too heavy super strong steel and you can just like chop down saplings with it. it's awesome so came in handy is that gonna help huh we'll see yeah how about how bad is it hurting right now right now it's fine yeah okay. all right this is the biggest downhill part maybe I'm pretty worried about Tori um, just because she's carrying one of the kids. I suppose I could carry both kids, so. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty worried about her, but. Are you she's worried that this is gonna take us forever? Yeah, she's worried it's gonna take us too long. So we didn't get started quite as early as we wanted to, but she seems to be a little better now that she has a good walking stick. So hopefully that does the trick, but anyways, beautiful hike so far is the good news. Really cool. There's caribou around here somewhere, eh? Maybe down in that valley. Well, we've come down a ways in elevation, 
Tori's doing okay. She's basically turning the foot on the leg with her bad knee out, so her toes point out. I'm walking down with that foot sideways when we go downhill, and it's better. She's got to take it slow though, but she's okay on the flats and uphill, so I think she's gonna make it. How you doing, hon? I really enjoy the uphills, believe it or not. Yeah, I bet. We're almost up the coast. Nice and blocked by this mountain too, so far. I bet it'll be, I'm sure it'll be windy when we get down there. Yeah. But anyways, I feel like the parking lot in the trailhead is a lot higher than the ocean, which means there's going to be more downhill on the way here, yeah. right? Well, gorgeous waterfall. Check that out right there. Just walking down the trail and boom, we hear it and then just see it. Gorgeous, and you can look at the ocean at the same time. White caps breaking out to the horizon, and uh, we got some sun now. Tori's doing okay, so things are going all right. But we got a little ways to go still, and then back up the trailhead, too. So, a little lunch break. made it to the coast and you know already the scenery is incredible um, and we have about a kilometer and a bit left to the end of the trail so the weather seems like it's changed a bit it's sunny still a little windy but much warmer than it was uh, back at the parking lot so things are looking up This is incredible. The trail just goes along an amazing stretch of coastline here. Just absolutely breathtaking. The end of the trail really for green gardens uh, beautiful look out here you have a couple of options from here you can continue um, north on the trail towards steve's cove apparently it's a really beautiful view or you can head down the really steep uh, and long set of stairs here to the beach um, if you go down to the beach if you go north at low tide there's a cave um, and if you go south along the beach and scramble up a bit you can, can see a, a small set of waterfalls um, Unfortunately, my knee is just way too sore to do either. We walked north on the trail a little bit, but it was really muddy and slippery, which was hurting my knee more. So I think we've come to the end of the trail here. So because of my knee, but um, we did pretty good. Made it all the way in at least. Beautiful, beautiful views here. Um, super windy still, but I think we're gonna head back to the car now. Hey, yeah, you can't do everything. That was great. You can't yeah, do I just, everything. I have to accept that I can't do everything. I mean, I made it in here. I, uh, there was a point earlier on in the trail I, I really thought I would, would have to turn back. My knee was really sore. It's gonna be uphill from this point on back to the truck, so I'll be able to move a lot faster. Yeah, so we're turning back. Uh, we made it most of the way. Would have been nice to check out the beach um, just to get down there and look at the cliffs, get a different perspective of this gorgeous stretch of coastline. Um, you know, Tori was explaining that there is some, you can climb up a bit and see some waterfalls, small waterfalls. At this time of year, there'd probably be hardly any flow in it. And then it would be really cool if, if you came here at low tide, right now the tide is in, but if you came at low tide, you could walk one way and find some sea caves. How cool is that? But uh, we can't do that either. And just 
Like it's amazing that Tori even made it this far. He's honestly pretty much trying to talk her out of even continuing on. So you can't do everything. Um, but one thing would be cool, come to here, camp here, wait for low tide, check out the sea cave, spend the night, walk back, something like that. By the time we get out here back to the truck, it'll probably be pushing five. So we're probably gonna camp somewhere around Trout River, uh, find a little campground. Uh, there's no park campgrounds open at this time of year. So we might find a private one or just find some back road we can pull off and I'm not sure yet. And then head down to Port of Basque tomorrow. And then our ferry's leaving the next day. So um, uh, yeah, our time in Grossmore National Park is coming to an end, sadly. It's been amazing. And our time in Newfoundland is also coming to the end, to an end, but uh, we're excited uh, for the ferry and for, for that experience too. Whew. Look how far we've come up from the ocean, but over there. Yeah. Yeah. Almost on the top. And then we go down a bit and then we're back to the trailhead where the truck is. Whew. And there it is, the parking lot. There we go, baby. There is the Silverado. What do you got to say? We did it. I didn't think I was going to make it. Good morning. Here we are in Porta Basque, Newfoundland, and uh, we found a little trailer park. Um, pretty much the only ones here, other than uh, one other uh, trailer. Um, it's occupied by people who lost their entire home in the storm. Um, noticed some destruction, but a lot of it's been cleaned up and uh, people seem to be more or less, the majority of people seem to be more or less back to normal after that one in 500 year hurricane that hit Port of Basque in this uh, part of Canada. So super impressed with the resilience of the people here, but must have been scary. Anyways, uh, we made our way down the western coast of the island and uh, <clears throat> just enjoyed some incredible, incredible scenery along the way. Uh, really enjoyed our the last hike we did in Gross Morn at Green Gardens, into Green Gardens, I should say. Very, very cool. And uh, still just been doing our thing, um, you know, making our way uh, with the, the Silverado and our off-grid trailer here, um, sleeping in the trailer, sometimes all four of us, which is a little tight, uh, sometimes one of us on the rooftop tent. Last night we just pitched our regular camping tent and uh, dad slept in there, had a really good sleep and it's very mild today, like shockingly mild, serious layer of dew on everything this morning. Um, beautiful, beautiful morning, hardly a cloud in the sky and I think it's going to be an awesome day to take the ferry back over to the mainland. So we are going to have I think a seven or eight hour ferry ride. We've rented our own little cabin and we will arrive in North Sydney, Nova Scotia. Well I guess technically not the mainland, that's still Cape Breton Island but it is connected by a bridge. So anyways, yeah, so you know Port of Basque is, is kind of um, 
cool place. Uh, really narrow streets, a lot of turns where houses are just kind of fit in wherever they could fit them in in the really rugged landscape. And it's a very old community too. Um, I imagine uh, a tradition, originally it was um, uh, settled or at least there was semi-permanent camps here by Basque whalers. Basque are uh, a people of the Pyrenees Mountains and a seafaring people. Um, and uh, they speak either, they're either French uh, Basque or Spanish Basque because their sort of territory spans both countries. One of the reasons you hear a lot of French names, it was, wasn't, uh, you know, the French uh, government, but the French never really had a great navy. France never really had a great navy. It was uh, independent uh, Basque people, Basque whalers and um, business operators going back, um, you know, uh, to the late 1500s even, so pretty cool. And uh, they actually found a historic site here um, when the hurricane hit. It washed out a nice walking trail and uncovered um, what was uh, uh, some sort of old semi-permanent settlement from uh, quite some time ago. So looking forward to hearing some more information about that. If anything interesting can come out of the hurricane, that's probably about it. Yeah, looking forward to checking out this ferry and moving on to the next part of our adventure, but it's really coming to an end. Uh, the main part of our trip is gonna be Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, so I don't know, as you know, we'll check out Cape Breton Island. Uh, we might make a side trip to the Bay of Fundy, but um, as far as, you know, backcountry adventures and, and multi-day, you know, of backpacking and stuff like like that that's pretty much coming to an end so we're just gonna pick our way home um, and it is the end of October right now so we'll be home probably before November so probably before Halloween and uh, yeah we're gonna head home um, you know up through Quebec City but uh, maybe take a little more time in Nova Scotia I've never been there before Tori's never been there before you know find places to just more or less camp off the road and um, a uh, couple spots there and uh, maybe you know see see a few sites that are accessible and uh, looking forward to that but um, you know we're, we're also it's been a long time so part of us are feeling a little homesick but we also don't want to so we do want to get home but we also are super excited to be where we are to see Nova Scotia and we don't want to just blast through it so got the kids in the truck and we are ready to hit the road so Baird family will be leaving Newfoundland in a couple hours um, sad to leave but we're already talking about our next adventure here uh, you know maybe I'll be back next year maybe in a couple years but definitely will not be our last time here good morning hey guys good morning. It feels like an underground uh, garage. No, it does. Hi, how are you? We are well, thank you. Yeah, he's not in his car seat. He drove here. He probably should get a ticket of some kind. Well, that's it. We are on the ferry. We did it. Yeah. Huddy's already enjoyed uh, the window seat and we're just watching waves crashing up on the shores of Newfoundland near Port of Basque. Really cool. It's a really neat experience already to be on this. What? Oh, I was going to say soon we're going to be watching waves of my vomit all over the floor. Tori's already feeling <laughs> not so good. Um, she does get some motion sickness. Ah, what is this? A biscuit? Um, dog. Yeah, so there we go. There's Newfoundland. Folks, Nova Scotia, this is North Sydney. Should be pulling into port in the coming minutes. We're 
Nova Scotia, hubby. Good morning, ladies and germs. Hitting the Cabot Trail, right, honey? Yeah. How stoked are you? One out of ten. Uh, I'm about a, I'm about a nine. Mm -hmm. Is that not high enough? I want big energy, big, big energy. energy. We came across a ferry yesterday. Just basically pulled up into a trailer park that was closed for the season. Called the guy. And he just let us stay there for free because we didn't like plug into anything. Because um, we were right in North Sydney. Anyway, so then we went over, well, do we just drive straight home or do we check out something in Nova Scotia? We flipped a uh, coin. We flipped a coin. To, we're both, you know, we're not going to lie. Tori's knee's a little sore. My hip's a little sore from doing our backpacking trek, too. So we wanted to let that heal up a bit. So we, we didn't know how much we'd be into, like, doing a big hike or, you know, where the hike would be and all this kind of stuff. So we just we looked online and we found the Cabot Trail, which is definitely famous. It's in Cape Breton Highlands National Park, much of it. And it's supposed to be one of the most scenic drives in all of Canada. And last time I checked, Canada is a pretty darn tootin' big place. So that is what we're going to do. Lobster, lobster traps. Hopefully it's not seasoned, but maybe we can get some like frozen lobster. This is fun, eh? A ferry? Already having fun! Bye bye! My ears are popping. We're going way up. This is a rest stop. so good the Cabot Trail has been pretty beautiful uh, still got a ways to go um, a lot of it cuts through uh, Cape Breton Highlands National Park um, so we're talking about what they say is one of the most scenic drives in Canada and Tori and I were on the fence whether we should do it you know spend the money just on gas and extra time getting home later but we're already super glad we did it because we've seen some beautiful views already kids are enjoying it Huddy's looking Huddy's sleeping they're both looking out the window. We're just taking some, you know, quick stops at the lookouts. We're not doing any hiking or spending time in here, but we're just basically extending our road trip to take us through a beautiful area. So yeah, more or less, we're just kind of cruising along here. We'll take a little side road off to some, you know, small little town in a cove, or, you know, we'll pull over at the lookouts and just take in the views and jump back in the truck and keep going. Now that we're up higher, there's, um, less fall colors, uh, just a higher elevation. It's a little colder and most of the leaves are off the trees. And then as we get down, there's more beautiful fall colors. So yeah, pretty awesome. I can tell there's a lot more kind of tourism through some of this route in the summer months as with most places in Canada, but um, we're both really glad we decided to do this.
this drive, the windy roads up the big steep climbs. Where are we going around this hill here on the other side of it? like that is it for the Cabot Trail a really beautiful drive there out of our way um, but worth it super relaxing we're glad that we did that and now it's basically time to make our way back home so um, you know I don't know how hard we're gonna push but uh, we're not gonna be taking the kind of time we did on the way here so you know you can more or less say our trips coming to an end although uh, we're solid 20 hours from our home in Magnetowan, Ontario. Gonna enjoy the drive here through the Maritimes for sure, and through New Brunswick, and uh, enjoy the sights. But uh, yeah, um, as far as the you know grander scale adventure goes, unfortunately, I think it's just a wrap. Another successful trip, not an easy undertaking, especially with the kids and everything like that, and all the other planning and expenses and everything that goes with this it's it's been a lot but it's been um pretty amazing super worthwhile and uh turns out we think it was a good time of year to do it all in too because a lot of these places um that you know we had all to ourselves would be busier in the summer and in tourist season and so uh we, i think we were pretty fortunate with the weather we had for the most part and um you know we got uh to basically miss the crowds in places that would have seen more people so that was really cool really special um all in newfoundland is just amazing you know uh to put it lightly uh, really really cool uh, to experience the moose hunt to experience gross morn and that beautiful western coast which is uh you know known to be uh, an absolutely beautiful place relatively accessible because there is a road there and uh you know i heard it was special and I heard right it was amazing um, definitely we'll go back there again sometime soon so yeah looking forward to uh, getting home it's been a long time that we've been on the road so definitely looking forward it'll be good to get home but uh, it's bittersweet I'm sad that it's coming to an end but I'm definitely looking forward to getting home um, I also don't want to rush too much through Nova Scotia and New Brunswick because we haven't been I haven't been here before. I don't think you have either. No. So it would be nice to do a little bit of sightseeing. You can't really ask for more than what we've experienced. I think all in the trip has been a huge success. <laughs> <laughs>